So as some of you may recognize from this rather distinctive box, I finally was lucky enough to find a watch that I've been looking for for a pretty long time. Maybe I'll let you in on a secret one of these days, but I've been lucky enough to find a source for a couple weird watches that I just really haven't been able to find anywhere else. And thanks to some patient waiting, many hours of looking, and of course a little bit of luck, I finally found this weird, definitely intriguing, and just a bit out of this world Seiko. This is the SCBS-007, also known as the Discus Burger. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And on today's episode, I'm introducing you to a weird watch. And if you're a subscriber to this channel, you definitely know that weird watches are my forte. And if you're not a subscriber, hey, now's a good time. So as you can see by this pretty polarizing design, this is definitely a weird watch. This watch was released in a special collection called the Moving Design Series. In the very early 2000s, Seiko released a group of watches that all had an interesting case shape. It was two panes of glass with a rather thick, almost kind of like a Panerai case. These two panes of glass got the nickname, the Burger. Some of these watches have a pretty boring aesthetic. They just kind of look plain to me. But there are several that are just a little bit wild and out of this world. And probably one of the most out of the world group is the Burger known as the Discus Burger. And of course, that's one of the watches we're looking at today. This is the SCBS-007. This is the black discus burger. It's a DLC case with a black frosted crystal. When you tilt the watch just right, you can see through the crystal and you can actually see all of the discs beneath. And I think that's pretty cool. There's also, of course, a spy window where you can tell the time. There's one disc for the seconds, there's one disc for the minutes, and of course there's one disc for the hours. Speaking of these discs, well, they're actually the most fun part to watch. So here we've got a little bit of a time lapse where you can see initially the discs moving at their normal speed, and then I kind of pep it up a little bit so you can see them really move. That's one of the maybe disadvantages of this watch. One, it's a little bit hard to read. The time telling device here is a little bit small. So for those who aren't exactly 20 years young, and maybe require a pair of reading glasses to help, it's a little bit hard to see. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it does make it a little bit more difficult. And speaking of difficult, as you can kind of tell, the lineup here, it makes that a little bit tough to tell the time as well. It's not like there's a clear line where you can really differentiate the time. The last little part about the time telling, I guess is just seeing everything before it happens, and let me explain that. Let's say it's two o'clock and it's getting close to three o'clock. Well, when it's actually so close to three, you, you pretty much see the big hour marker or disc and you think it's three o'clock. But actually, when you look a little bit more closely, you can see that it's closer to you know 2.45 or 2.50. So it really is kind of a bit of a gimmick. I mean, a pretty cool gimmick but definitely the time telling is a little bit difficult on this watch. But it doesn't take away from looking at the window, seeing these discs rotate. One little piece that I wasn't able to really capture on film very well is that the discs are actually different heights. So initially, the large disc is a little bit lower and the other discs kind of raise up a little bit. And they actually even have a pretty cool texture on them. So not only are they fun to watch and see spin around, but they actually have a little bit of a special characteristic which catches your eye and I think just in general looks really nice. And the last little thing that you can really see here on this close-up is how cool that frosted glass is. It's just special that it's see-through. There actually is a different version that has a solid case, but I think you kind of lose something there. I really like seeing the see-through and I like seeing all of the dials moving underneath it. I think it's pretty cool. If you're lucky enough to find one of these watches, there's no reason to spend the Urwerk kind of money, and you don't even have to go all independent like Trilobe. You can own a watch with a revolving time display and save yourself tens and or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So even though this way of telling the time is a little bit odd or maybe even a little bit revolutionary, 
This is actually a pretty standard Seiko movement. So this is the 6R15 movement, a pretty regular 23 joule movement with a 50 hour power reserve. The beating machine of this watch really is just a standard Seiko. So it's pretty neat that they were able to modify it in a way that it could support these big discs. And similar to a regular watch or even a regular Seiko, if you turn this watch over, you've got a bit of an exhibition case back. Similar to the front, it's a dark frosted glass with a special porthole to see the escapement. So if I had to narrow down some of my favorite things about this watch, obviously the first thing is just the looks. I think really the main reason, if not the only reason you buy this watch is just to make a statement. And this big pile of glass that looks like a discus burger, well, it makes a statement. There are a few different variations of the burger, particularly the discus burger, and the all-black version probably isn't my favorite, but it's definitely not my least favorite. There's a really cool one in all stainless steel, but the disadvantage, you don't have the translucent top. They also make one that's got a two-tone finish, which, well, I'm not always the biggest fan of two-tone. And then they make my favorite version, which is the stainless steel with a white clear top. I've still got my eye out for one of those. So if I had to give this watch a disadvantage, I would actually say how it wears. I've got a six and a half inch wrist, and thanks to the strap that flares out quite a bit, and I guess a case body that's pretty large, this watch wears big. Can I wear it on my wrist? Absolutely. If I look at it from the side or a profile and I kind of jiggle my wrist in just the right way, I can definitely see that there's some gapping that tells me that this watch is just a little bit too big for my wrist. I have a solution for this though. I'm probably going to put it on a rubber strap anyway. You'd never guess that this watch was 100 meters water resistant, but it's a Seiko, so of course it is. And I've never found the practicality of wearing a water resistant watch with a leather strap that isn't water resistant. So definitely, I think a rubber strap is in its future. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video showing off the SCBS-007, introducing you maybe to the Seiko moving design series that you may or may never heard of. If you've got any questions about this watch or anything else, you can always leave a comment or send me an email. If you like this kind of content, give the channel a subscription. Every subscriber helps, and it definitely helps me reach my goal. 50,000 subscribers isn't too far away, and one day I hope to make 100,000. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week in a new episode. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. I make weekly videos regarding tons of horological topics, including wristwatches, pocket watches, and current topics regarding watch collecting and the watch market in general. Please leave a like, or maybe even a comment or a question. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that, and it helps the channel. And speaking of helping the channel, I've got two avenues where you can donate to the channel. You can join right here on YouTube by becoming a YouTube member, or you can follow the link in the description and join my Patreon. Thank you, I really do appreciate it.